In this Grasshopper tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create fractals such as this one in Grasshopper using custom made nodes that are scripted in Python. To begin, I'll show you how the algorithm works in the Rhino viewport, and then I'll script it up in Python. So first I'll just make a polyline, which is a triangle and um, scale this polyline by each one of its corners. And you'll see that by doing this, I can create a nice um, fractal, but it takes a really long time to do. And that's why it's better to automate the process with Python. And as you can see, just by doing that once, uh, my end result is the same as this fractal uh, after one iteration of recursion. So uh, now we're, let's begin writing our code. I'm gonna open up a Python node and delete one of these inputs, rename the output to geometry and rename the input to depth. And I could even name this to fractal. And now we're ready to start scripting. After we hook up our depth, and our panel, just so that we can send ourselves messages by using print statements. Okay, let's write some code. If I open this editor, I can start making the initial triangular polyline just by creating three points. Points are simply tuples, which is a list of values surrounded by parentheses. So the first point of the triangle will be at the origin. The second point will be at 50, 100, zero and point C will be at 100, zero, zero. And now to create a list of triangles and initialize it with our very first triangle, I'm just gonna type out triangles equals, and then a list and inside that list, we'll have to create our first triangular polyline by typing out rs dot uh, add poly, add polyline and if I just throw a list of points into this polyline function, it'll create a polyline. So um, I'll just type in A, B, C, and then back around to A to close off our polyline. And just to verify that this is working so far, I'm gonna say geometry equals uh, triangles. And let's test our code. You can see everything ran well because there's no red. And if I hook up a line to the output of geometry, well, that didn't work. I could hook up a polyline to the, or a um, curve, I suppose. A polyline falls under the category curve. You can see that that worked. And if I hover over here, you can say, see one value inherited from one source, polyline curve. The reason it didn't work for a line is because a line must be one straight line. All right, so since that worked and we now have our triangle, well, let's disable or, uh, yeah, let's disable this previous program so we can see what we're working with here. And now it's time to write our function. So we're gonna wanna repeat all of these steps as many times as there is depth. So we'll say for i in range depth, we will um, repeat this process of creating a new list of triangles. So we'll say new triangles and it we'll leave it as an empty list for now. And then for each triangle in the old list of triangles, we'll have to make three new triangles and toss it into this list of new triangles. So we'll say for triangle, in triangles and uh, to find these three new triangles that we're gonna toss into the new triangles list, all we need to do is uh, find all of the centers that we're scaling around and scale by them. So to find these centers that we're scaling around, we just need to find the points of the polyline, which are rs dot polyline vertices. And if I just pass in my triangle, it'll return a list of points, which are the vertices. 
So now for each one of these points, we're gonna to wanna to scale the, tr the triangle around that center point and then put it into this list of new triangles. So I'll say new, or actually for I in range three. So for each corner of the triangle, we're going to want to say new triangles plus equals. And then we're just gonna merge it with this new list containing the new triangle. And we can create this new triangle by typing out rs dot scale object. And if you're um, wondering how this scale object function works, I should mention that you can just open up uh, a Chrome tab and look up Rhino script syntax and Rhino developer docs, this first tab is the one. And you can look under all these categories or search up any function to find the specifics. So if I wanna know how scale object works, I'll just type in scale object right here. And it'll bring up the parameters, the return values of the function, and it'll even give me a nice little example. And as you can see, we have the object, the point we're scaling around, the scale factor, we're actually three factors. This is a scale factor in the X dimension, scale factor in the Y dimension, scale factor in the Z dimension, and true meaning we want to copy the curve and not scale it itself. We wanna make a, a replica of it that's scaled. Okay, so let's return back now that we know how RS scaled object works. And um, so what are we scaling? The triangle, uh, what are we scaling around this point, which is points of I, because points is the list of all points and I is which point we're using. This, uh, what are the scale factors? Well, 50%, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then do we want to copy it? Yes, so I'll just say true. Um, and I think I have one too many parentheses here. And now if I test, you can see on line 17, range integer argument expected got float. So let's go to line 17. So it's expecting an integer here, but I inputted a float. So let's go check and see what the type of this depth is set the type hint because it should be integer. Now if I set it to integer, I test it. Now I got a new error. So, so it was interpreting this as a float even though it's an integer. And that's because I didn't specifically tell it what kind of this was. So I, I really just had to go into the input and make sure to tell Python, yes, this is an integer. Um, but I have another error on line 19, triangles is not defined um, da -da, for triangle in triangles. And that would be because I'm terrible at spelling. Triangles needs to be capitalized. Um, let's test it now. Name true, not found. True needs to be capitalized in Python. All right and everything worked. Um, so now that I've used the console to find all my errors, I've got one last thing to do, which is set triangles oops, to new triangles. And if we test it out, great, it, everything seems to be working. So let's turn up this recursive depth and enjoy this nice fractal we just constructed together. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more Grasshopper Python videos. This is one of many to come. Thank you very much. Goodbye.